Choosing a graphics tablet might seem like the biggest decision you can make when you're starting to learn digital art, especially if you want a display tablet where you use the stylus directly on the screen, because those can be insanely expensive. I've made a lot of graphics tablet companies mad by saying that I will not be reviewing any graphics tablets that are not display tablets. When I said this also on my Instagram feed, it also annoyed many people who use tablets such as this one. And yes, I use this one as well. I want to get this out of the way so that you can understand where I'm coming from. Growing with a graphics tablet such as this one is its own separate skill. To look on a separate monitor to see the input your hand does somewhere else is not something that comes naturally to everyone. In my art classes, I sometimes have students who are using a tablet for the very first time. In those schools where I teach art, the tablets are almost always ones that don't have screens in them, just because they are usually so expensive for the school to buy. Now I'm not saying that everyone has challenges with those tablets, but a large portion of students do. I think art is hard enough on its own to learn without adding this whole extra skill to learn before you even get to learning art. And that's the reason why I would never recommend buying a non-display graphics tablet in this day and age. Especially because the prices of display tablets have been reduced to literally less than 20% of what they used to be. I mean, back when Wacom and dinosaurs ruled the earth. This Artist 16 Pen Display second generation tablet by XP Pen is a cheap graphics tablet in the space of display tablets. That's one of the reasons why I agreed to do this review. The second reason is a much bigger one, which is just corruption in the space of hardware reviews. Let me explain because I feel like this is really important. It is shocking how many hardware brands have contacted me personally to do paid reviews on this channel. Obviously, a paid review is not a review at all, it's an advertisement. There are so many things that have been suggested to me from different companies that are just completely unethical, no matter how I think about it. That's also why you won't see even any affiliate links to this product in this video. If there is an affiliate link in the product being reviewed, then obviously I would have a monetary incentive to make this product seem more appealing than it actually is. This corruption issue is much bigger than what you can even possibly imagine. Every single brand, except Wacom, has sent me these questionable offers. I hope that you take that into consideration when you see reviews on YouTube. Also, I'm not giving Wacom a free pass here. It might be that they just don't care that I even exist. I'm not going to name names because it's not my style to call anyone out. But I see other people agreeing to these sponsorships and I can see from either the timing or content of those videos that they're working under the same offers that were presented to me earlier. Now with that out of the way, XP Pen sent me this tablet, but all the opinions expressed in this video are my own, and at no point did XP Pen get to approve or view the content of this video before it being published here. Even so, I think it's important to underline that I get to keep this tablet, even if it's a cheap tablet and I don't really need it at all, for the sake of transparency, I think it's important for you to know that something of value did change hands for this video to exist and to happen. I'm sorry for that whole rant, it's just something that I feel really strongly about. Let's look at the actual tablet now. The packaging is nicely minimalistic. However, I don't see why the tray for the product itself needs to be plastic at all, instead of cardboard. I also got three different adapters for the power cord. I hope that in the future when you order products, such as this one, you could have the option of selecting just one of these for your order. Your region has only one kind of power outlet anyway. Getting two extra ones you have no use for just seems like unnecessary e-waste to me. My first impression of the tablet is that it looks really good. I mean, just as an object, I thought that this is a really good looking tablet. I was surprised that there were color options at all. I got the blue one, but it's closer to petrol blue, 
When selecting the color, I was a bit worried how the color of the tablet would affect the way that I perceived the colors on the screen itself. Considering that the color is on the sides and on the back of the tablet, this really turned out to be a non-issue. If this was my first ever tablet, I would have probably gone with the version that doesn't have any color in it. But it's kind of exciting to get a tool like this with a little bit of color in it. Honestly, I kind of regret not going with the pink one, because I think that looks kind of cute. This tablet is quite thin too, and that's what got me really excited to try it out. I have a 21 inch Wacom Cintiq, back from the days when they came with metallic stands, and even though that Cintiq is still nice to use for painting, it's just way too big and cumbersome to move around. This might not be an issue if all you want to do on your desk is just digital painting on the same device. I do all kinds of art on this desk and edit all of these videos. I need to be able to move around my tools quite often. For that purpose, this pen display is perfect because I can just lift it off the table with one hand and I don't need to unplug all the cords like you do need to do with those older Cintiq stands because of the way the cords are attached. The screen resolution is 1920 by 1080 which on paper seems like honestly not a lot of pixels. After some research, I found out that this is still a pretty common resolution for display tablets even today. Even many of the current Wacom tablets that are way more expensive still use this exact same resolution. When I switched the screen on, I wasn't immediately shocked by some very chunky looking pixels. What really slaps you in the face though, in a very negative way, is the massive size of menus in programs where the menu size is dictated by the resolution of your screen. Luckily, most programs have a full screen painting mode and after some time it wasn't that intrusive. But for editing though, this would be an issue because of the lack of space. The screen really is the most divisive aspect about the whole experience. At first I thought it looks extremely dark. Even when I pumped up the light brightness all the way to 100, it still looks like my iPad brightness at 50%. However, this might also be the reason why it's so cool. Literally, this is an extremely cool surface, even after having it in use all day. iPads really warm up in use, even the M1 chip ones. Artist 16 pen display never felt like a hot plate to my palm. Honestly, after painting an entire workday with my old Cintiq, it usually smells like bacon in here, because it's pretty much like you're frying your hand all day. By the way, the tablet comes with one of these gloves that I'm not going to say anything about, because I will never be wearing one of these. The whole idea just seems weird to me. If any tablet maker wants to send me an art cape, I will gladly wear it, because everyone knows that capes improve art skills immediately. I just know that someone in the comments is going to take this personally, but damn it, I don't have to like your fancy art glove. Wear it if it makes you happy, I don't care. Everybody, please just chill. Anyway, back to the tablet. If you look closely at the hotkeys, they have these identifiable tactile dots in them, which makes them really easy to recognize when you're not looking at them. Each of these buttons is fully programmable, and the interface for customization is very simple and easy for pretty much anyone to use. Personally, I'm used to using the keyboard on my lap. You can see it in this video, but I'm doing all the color adjustments and layer settings with the keyboard. If you are left-handed though, those hotkey buttons don't have to be on the left. You can rotate the entire screen in settings. Even that USB-C cord can be plugged in either direction, depending on where you want the cord to go. Probably the most important aspect of any of these tablets is the pen itself or stylus, whatever you want to call it. This stylus has 8192 levels of pressure. I know that it might seem like the way to compare it with other pens is to compare the amount of pressure levels. In practice, I personally think this is a totally wrong way to look at it. All of the tablets I have used have definitely enough pressure levels, no matter what those numbers are. However, I don't think all of those pressure levels are as easy to use depending on the build quality of the tip of the pen itself. If we look at Apple Pencil Tip, it's really easy to use the very lightest pressure levels. 
However, when you use the XP pen stylus, there's a very slight travel to the nib of the pen when you touch the screen. You can hear this by tapping the tip with your finger. Those first pressure levels only kick in after the nib has traveled this short distance. That travel distance in this XP pen is really short though. If you compare it to a Wacom stylus, they have a clearly longer travel compared to the XP pen. When you tap the tip of those Wacom pens, you can clearly feel the difference in the distance of that travel. If I had to put this in order of ease of use, I would say that Apple Pencil is the best one with zero travel. Then XP Pen Stylus, then Indoor Stylus from 10 years ago. And as the last option, I would put the new Cintiq pens, simply because of the gross rubber that turns into glue over time. Trust me, it's a real thing, and somehow the older Wacom styluses, they don't have this issue at all. There is no rubber material on XP Pen Stylus, so I'm not worried about that happening in the future. Also in the new Wacom Pens, you don't really run into this issue at first, but after you have used the stylus for a few years, the rubber somehow turns into this sticky mess. It's terrible. XP Pen also supports tilt angle, but only 60 degree angle. Again, the numbers don't give a proper idea what it's like to use. Because of that nib travel that I just mentioned, I really don't think the tilt is worth using at all. This might not be a big deal to anyone who is used to using traditional graphics tablets, but for me, having that option of tilt on iPad is really nice. In fact, almost all of the brushes in the brush sets that I have made for Procreate have this tilt set to either blending or opacity or both. I even made this whole video tutorial about it if you want to apply that to your own brushes. So aside from the tilt being kind of useless, the pen doesn't have any other problems. The pen doesn't produce any micro jitters. I know that those have been an issue with some of the previous XP pen models, but after testing these lines with a ruler, I can say that I didn't run into any of those issues. When you're using this stylus on the screen, I just have to say how impressively thin the surface of the tablet is. You really feel like the pen is touching your painting instead of hovering above it due to some very thick glass that some tablets have. The screen surface is covered in matte treatment that I absolutely hate and love. I know that some people like this sort of friction when drawing, but I don't really draw almost ever digitally. When I'm painting, this added friction just prevents the brush strokes from gliding naturally over the surface, and I really don't like that. That is not a pleasant feeling when working. But that's my personal taste. There's no objective truth here. You just have to ask yourself if you mostly like to paint digitally, or do you mostly like to draw with your tablet. I think that should be the deciding factor here. Personally, I'm definitely a painter, so I would prefer a clear screen that has the sharpest image quality. When I want to draw, honestly, I will just get a pen and paper and do it that way, like you have seen in my other videos. However, I can't just leave it there, and this is why I was committed to using the tablet for actual work. Over time, my initial impressions of the screen quality did change quite a lot. Even if I still dislike that friction of the screen, as someone who makes YouTube videos, it was so easy to use this footage, because the whole device has almost no reflections on it, because of that matte surface. That is, in my opinion, kind of gross. It was also easy to lay this tablet flat on the surface of the table. Now, I have to say that there is no stand or legs on this tablet. The reason why I'm always working on a flat surface is only really only because I am shooting this footage from above. If I didn't make these videos for me, it would be a huge problem that this tablet cannot be raised at an angle for working. I would find some kind of a solution to get around that. You can see that there are stands in some of the product images on XP Pen's website, but they don't even sell those, but clearly they have figured out that you shouldn't be using it this way. Sometimes people ask me about this in the comments and I just wanted to point out that in no way do I recommend working with your paper or tablet flat on the table for many hours, unless you have some insane core muscles, which I 
clearly don't. So please take care of your working ergonomics because you only have one body. I'm serious. There is probably a stand that one could buy to fix this problem, but unfortunately for me, I will keep working on the flat surface because it's just easier to use that footage that way. My initial impression of this screen kind of changed over time. The colors turned out to be shockingly good. I almost always do my color edits on one of my more expensive monitors, and I thought that there's no way that I would ever trust the colors of a screen that is this cheap. So when the painting was finished and I switched to my editing monitor, in the end the colors, they kind of look just almost identical. Considering the price of this screen, I think that's just super impressive. Now to be clear, it doesn't have the same contrast ratio, brightness or viewing angles of the latest iPads, but honestly when it comes to just the colors, it's surprisingly good. If I was in a hurry, I think it would be totally fine for me to just use this, not just for painting, but also for color editing. And I don't think it would be visible in the end results at all. So would I recommend this tablet? That really depends on your situation and what you need currently. The price point is honestly great for what you're getting here. Both the screen quality and the pen. However, you do need an actual computer to take advantage of both of these products. And if you're thinking of getting this and a computer for painting, then you're probably looking at spending more money in total than just buying an iPad and an Apple Pencil. However, if you already have a computer good enough for digital art, then this is definitely a cheap and a really good option for anyone in that situation. If you're thinking of using this as your main tool, I recommend finding a way to set this tablet at an angle that can be comfortable for you. I hate to sound like your art dad here, but you absolutely want to fix those ergonomics problems before they start showing up as symptoms. That can be really hard and painful to recover from later if you don't fix that problem immediately. So don't paint or draw on a flat surface, please. This is your art dad talking, <laughs> okay. I would hate it if somebody permanently hurt themselves because they are painting like I am. So please take care of yourselves. Also, if you want to do, for example, 3D sculpting, I would still recommend computer programs such as Blender or Jetpress with a display tablet instead of sculpting apps on the iPad. Those are fun, but I think the quality gap is so big that it's going to take years and years before they reach the level of those other programs. If you're wondering if it's possible to do professional art with a cheap tablet, then I would say that hardware has nothing to do with it, especially at this quality level of hardware that we have currently. You can't really make that terrible choices that would affect the actual quality of the artwork. I didn't feel at all restrained because of this piece of hardware. It's really just a tool for your imagination. Hopefully everyone who follows this channel understands that your imagination is something that can be trained and improved with practice. So that's all on you. There's no limitations what you can create. And if that's something you're interested in developing, you can for example follow the assignment in this video to find inspiration in ordinary places. I'll be back in the next video and I'll see you guys there. 